The immune system is made up of three lines of defense, the first two of which are part of innate immunity and the third one of which is part of adaptive or acquired immunity. Innate immunity is the body's general response to any type of invasion by harmful substances, while adaptive immunity is based on memory and specificity for a certain pathogen. So the first line of defense is a barrier, such as the skin or mucous membranes. These barriers prevent pathogens from entering the body in the first place. The second line of defense includes different types of cells that work together in order to eliminate any nonspecific substance. One type of cell might be a phagocyte, which engulfs bacteria and breaks the bacteria down. Another type of cell is a monocyte, which is a white blood cell that can digest germs, remove dead cells, and display parts of the germs called antigens on its surface. There are a lot of other different types of cells, but you definitely do not need to know all of them for the AP exam. In addition to phagocytes and monocytes, the second line of defense also includes the inflammatory response, which is characterized by coughing, swelling, redness, and can even be a part of allergies. The third line of defense is adaptive, meaning that it can develop slower and relies on memory. For example, the first time you get a specific infection, your body might be slow to respond, but the second time you get it again, your body will respond way faster. So the third line of defense is composed of B and T cells, also called B and T lymphocytes. Both B and T cells circulate in the blood and originate from the bone marrow. B cells mature in the bone marrow while T cells mature in the thymus. So these B and T lymphocytes function in recognizing antigens, which are foreign molecules. A B cell receptor looks like this with a variable region here, meaning it can be different for all B cells, while a T cell receptor looks like this with its variable region here. Different antigens can bind to different variable regions. Upon binding, B and T cells are activated, and from there, they can do a series of things. For instance, once a pathogen is inside a host cell, enzymes in the cell cleave it into fragments. These fragments then bind to MHC molecules, which are cell surface markers unique for each person. By the way, MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex, but I'm just going to keep it as MHC for now. Alright, so once the fragments bind to the MHC molecules, they go up to the surface and display the fragments. The displayed fragments can bond with any matching receptor on any cell, such as a T-cell. When this happens, the T-cell can release proteins called perforins that kill infected cells. Also, there are two types of T-cells, cytotoxic T-cells and helper T-cells. Cytotoxic T-cells kill infected cells and are the ones that release perforins. Meanwhile, the helper T cells are the ones that sort of announce and warn other cells that the pathogen is in the body. Helper T cells do this by releasing molecules called cytokines, activating B cells, cytotoxic T cells, and more helper T cells. Another important thing to know is the difference between effector and memory cells. Effector cells are short-lived and attack the antigen as soon as they get the chance. On the other hand, memory cells are long-lived and hold receptors that are specific for the antigen for future purposes. There is also the humoral immune response and the cell-mediated response, which involve the roles of B and T cells. In the humoral response, effector B cells secrete antibodies that circulate in the blood and lymph to recognize foreign substances and prevent them from contacting healthy body cells. In the cell-mediated response, cytotoxic T cells are activated to destroy target cells. These cytotoxic T cells are effector cells that target pathogens through direct secretion of proteins that cause cell rupture and death. Helper T cells help both the humoral and cell-mediated responses by bonding to antigen fragments and secreting cytokines that act as signaling molecules for the rest of the cells, alarming them that there is a specific pathogen. Alright, so there you go for your immune system overview. That's basically all the key points that you'll need to know either for your biology class or the EP exam. Thanks for watching and don't forget to comment any questions that you might have.